How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Flight Simulator video. Today we are in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is our first video in here in this game. On the last flight video where we're doing an IFR flight, I was talking about possibly getting this at some time, waiting for them to fix a couple of issues. Well, they didn't fix any issues, but I got it anyway. Um, this is an interesting game. I, I like it and I also hate it. Um, I love the radio communications, and I love the slightly more realistic flight model, but I hate pretty much everything else about the game. Um, just today, I was going to record this video three hours ago, and there is a mandatory update. Today is Halloween, October 31st. They released an update yesterday, and for some reason, I could not get it to download. I was an idiot, and I bought it through the Microsoft Store. Never do that. I bought it through the Microsoft Store, and I kept trying and trying, and there was an error every single time it tried to download the update through the Microsoft Store. But I finally got it. I don't know what I did, but it finally worked. So anyway, we are in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It looks absolutely beautiful, other than those trees right there. For some reason, those aren't looking very good after I updated the game. Um, but we are in here. It looks great. I love the scenery, and there's tons of airplanes. I bought the ultra high-end premium. I bought every single airplane just so that I could get this. The Cessna 172 without the Garmin G1000. <laughs> yeah, you have to buy the high send thing to get the most basic airplane. This is pretty much the airplane I fly. I fly the 172, typically the, the M, the N, maybe the O, uh, but I usually fly with a Garmin 430. So this little one down here, the Garmin 430, that's what I have. So this is familiar to me. This is what I normally fly in real life so yeah but anyway we are here in Troutdale Oregon we're gonna be going to Aurora the home of Vans Aircraft if you don't know Aurora that is where Vans Aircraft has their factory they have factory tours uh, they're shut down right now um, but you can do factory tours and you can also test fly their airplanes which is really awesome so when they do reopen I'm going to do that um, but light speed the headphone makers like the Lightspeed Zulu, they also have their factory and headquarters right in Aurora. So that'll be fun. So this should be about a 15 minute flight or so. I wanted to keep this short so that I could show you some of the things about the game. I really love the VFR communications for air traffic control. I think that's amazing. You have CTAF um, communications, which is really cool. You would not have that in X-Plane. And you also have tower communication for non-IFR flights, so you can request taxis and clearance and landings and all that sort of stuff without doing IFR, so that's awesome. But anyway, let's go ahead. We will do this somewhat realistically, somewhat not. Um, so let's go ahead and we will get this airplane going. A couple of things that bother me with this is, one, they have the fuel mixture always full rich whenever you load into the game for the first time. As far as I know, that's not what you're supposed to do. I could be wrong, but I've never stepped into a cold and dark airplane with a mixture full rich. I've never seen that before. Also, parking brake is always off. I prefer parking brake on. Some people have different opinions. My CFI, for some reason, they always did not want the parking brake on. Whenever we got in, every time I asked, do we need the parking brake on? It's like, we're doing our run-up. We're going up to 1700 RPMs on the run-up. But never the parking brake. You hold the tow brakes instead. I don't know. I, pr I prefer parking brake. Even when we're turning off the plane, getting out and going. No chocks, no parking brake. Just hope it doesn't roll away. I like parking brake. Also, third thing. This may confuse you if you are new to aviation and you try to start this airplane. It will not start because the fuel mixture is off. The fuel is off right here. This open fuel shutoff valve, you have to push that in that will then turn the fuel on. This is like the emergency release fuel cutoff valve. Again, I've never seen that pulled out before. It's on the checklist to make sure it's pushed in in real life, but I've never seen that ever pulled out before. Usually I think of that as emergency situations. You pull out an emergency. I could be wrong, but I've never seen that pulled out either. So anyway, we've got the plane <laughs> kind of fixed. First thing we will do is we will turn our beacon on just so people know we're working turn the battery on got the beep the got some warnings up here that's fine and this is a fuel injected not carbureted engine so you don't necessarily have to prime it 
But typically what you do is you full rich, full throttle, turn on the fuel pump. You can see that fuel flow go up right here. And we'll do that for about three seconds, turn the fuel pump back off, throttle back to idle, and now you are primed. So after that, make sure our parking brake is on, or if you're one of those people, hold the tow brakes, and we'll start the engine. You can't open the door in this game, you can't explain, but we'll just, we'll pretend, and we'll say clear. And it starts right up, and we'll turn the alternator on. And now we can turn on our avionics there and it's going to take a minute for the autopilot to calibrate that'll be once it's done but I've already uh, mapped in where we're going right here Aurora to, or Troutdale to Aurora uh, I don't so I selected runway 17 for landing but I didn't know what the meter was reading back yet so we'll figure that out later I guess um, first thing let's do we will there we go autopilot's ready um, first thing we'll do is it does not look like we have our ATIS available. Uh, that's fine. Okay, let's turn to ground and we will be departing to the south. So we'll request our taxi for south departure. Troutdale ground, Cessna 128 Echo from Victor, ready to taxi, southwest departure. Cessna November 128 Echo Victor, taxi to and hold short of runway 7 using taxiway Charlie. Contact tower on 120 decimal nighter when ready. Runway 7 via Charlie, 8 Echo Victor. Okay, so we're taxiing via Charlie to runway 7. So that's going to be to our left is which way we'll go. Don't mind these people. I, I need to turn these all off. I don't use my marshals or ground people or anything like that. So, yeah. <laughs> I turn them off and I don't really care about them. So... Yeah, if I run through any of these vehicles or cars or people, yeah, it's fine. So we are on Charlie. You can see that on the left there. Bravo is up on turn. If you do a left turn, you'll be on Bravo. So we'll keep going up here to runway 7. All right, we're holding short to runway 7. Let's go ahead and contact Tower. We'll tell them we're ready for south departure. Go to Tuna Tower and we'll request takeoff clearance. Troutdale Tower, Cessna 12 Echo Victor. Holding short, runway 7, ready for departure. Cessna November 128 Echo Victor cleared for takeoff, runway 7, departure to the south approved. Clear for takeoff, 8 Echo Victor. Okay, we're clear for takeoff. For AI and other air traffic, I am just using live air traffic right now. So it's not AI, but it's actually what's in the sky right now. You can also do multiplayer, which I have tried before, and it's really awesome. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But here it is on number seven. Let's go ahead and we'll take off here. We've got a south departure, so we're going to have to turn to the right. And we will go ahead and resume our own navigation. We're not doing IFR today. We're looking for around 55 to 60 knots. We have two passengers aboard, you and me. So we'll wait till we get a little bit higher on the speed and rotate. There's a couple of differences between Flight Simulator 2020 and X-Plane. For me, this airplane seems a little less realistic than the actual thing. The Cessna 172s are very nose happy. They love to go straight up. So I always have to trim down, even on takeoff. In this case, I have to trim up. If I let go of the stick, the nose just drops down. So that's not quite realistic. Continue for south departure, I to go back there. They'll let me know. We're just gonna get over these mountains here and then we'll turn to the right. But yeah, so these things do not love to climb in this game for some reason. Also, it does not seem to be as powerful as it is in X-Plane. I haven't flown a lot recently, so I'm a little rusty on performance-wise for this airplane, but um, it seems to be a little bit underpowered in this game. It all seems to be overpowered in X-Plane, so you just got to decide what you want there. But two passengers, it seems a little sluggish and does not like to climb very well. 
But anyway, we're looking for... Oh, we got turbulence from that mountain. That's one of my favorite things, though, is that the weather... Or not necessarily the weather, because right now it's clear skies and I, I looked at the METAR. The METAR is right before is overcast. So, yeah, live weather is not not great, not very accurate. Uh, but we're going to climb about 2,000 feet here. But I love the turbulence and the way that the airplane moves. It's much, much more realistic than the perfectly smooth, clear skies of X-Plane. There's a lot of turbulence in this game. And several gusts, wind gusts, you kind of get bounced around every now and then, which is very realistic. And also, every time you get near a mountain, you have the, you know, the wind vortex coming off the mountains and causing turbulence for you. So, yeah, it's really realistic in that sense of the weather. I do not what's, know what's going on with all these buildings out here. Those don't look real. <laughs> Those don't look right. I'll have to look into that because it looked really great <laughs> right before I updated the game, of course. And they do not let you run the game until you update it. We're climbing up, we're going to about 2,000 feet. It's not too far away. I'm not going to request transition into Class Charlie airspace. Um, we're skipping that part of the realism today. We're also skipping the run up. Typically, you would do that, but we're just going to be requesting takeoff, taxi, landing, all that sort of stuff. And for the most part, we're going to follow our own navigation. Usually, they don't tell you anything unless you're trying to avoid traffic anyway. And we have our guidance on the map right here, so at least I will be able to see a little bit of where we're going. And yeah, that's the game so far. I really do like this. I haven't had a chance to fly every single airplane. I am not a big fan of airliners. I do not do much with commercial jets. I am all general aviation and it's fun. I actually really like... Okay, we can change our frequency. Frequency change approved, A to vector. Good day. And you can turn... We'll just tune to Portland Approach right now, just in case. We, we can hear what's going on, at least. Um, you can actually see the Aurora already. You can see that. It's a little easier in the game than it is in real life to spot the airport. It's not actually that easy in real life to find where you're going. We're going to just level off at 2,500 since we got a little ways to go. Anyway, what I was saying is that I haven't had a chance to fly every single airplane, but I really actually like flying the Cessna 152. I have not actually flown that in real life, mainly because it's very, very small and it has a maximum weight limit of 200 pounds per person. And I don't want to really get that close to the limit there. Um, I'm under, but I, I don't like tiny little airplanes like that. So I've only flown the 172. I actually really love flying the 152 in this game. It's a lot of fun. Oh, there goes an airplane right there. He's really low. That's Alaska. He must be just taking off from Portland. And we're back. The game froze again. I think I might have to do with my mouse. Anyway, we're at 6 degrees Celsius. We're going to turn on the pitot heat. Typically it's around 5. You want to do that. And that should be good there. Okay. So we can already see the airport. We'll make contact with them in about 8 miles out. Right now we're 14.6 miles out. So we're fine for now. I did hear them on the Portland approach. They were telling Sun Country to avoid us. So they know we're who we are. They know where we're at. And our main goal is to stay straight and level right now. If we take a look at the autopilot, I can select my heading right here. I, and then if I turn heading on, I can select heading. And then I can say altitude. And now it should hold our altitude at 2,600 feet. I can change that to 2,500 if I want. Now the airplane is flying itself. The autopilot system here is a little bit different than X-Plane. It's not as simple <laughs> in this game, uh, but it works pretty good. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but you should be able to figure it out, no problem. We also have our transponder down here. Um, I guess we could just squawk VFR if we really want, uh, but we don't have to. And if we take a look at our map right here, you can see we're a little bit right of the line. And that's fine because if we take a look up here, there's our airport right over there. 
So we want to not necessarily be completely on that because it's a direct path to the airport, which is not a direct path to the runway. But anyway, we're about 11.9 miles out. We'll contact tower at about 8 miles, let them know we're inbound, we're ready to land. I can, pull. once we get closer, I'll also pull up the ATIS so we know which way the wind's blowing. So if they do tell us to land on 17, which I did select for some reason, it selected that, um, we can tell them we want a different runway so that we can land the proper direction. You always want to land into um, the wind here. And if we zoom out, we can see a little bit more around us. We can hide these um, different points on the glide path right here. Um, typically, you should be able to change this from north up to head up, but you can't. It's always north up. So that's unfortunate. I'm always used to um, head up, so you have to think about it a little bit differently. Anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can grab the ATIS here for Aurora. Okay, so we're going to listen to the ATIS. We're getting close, so let's hear what they have to say for weather. Okay, so wind is 1018, so we want um, not runway 17. So we'll request a full stop landing. Aurora Tower, Cessna 128, Echo Victor, 8 miles north with uniform to land. We might have to tell them we want a different That's runway then. We'll start to, to descend power. as well. Pull the power Eight back three, and we'll go down. Okay, so that wants to fly straight in for 1 7. Fly straight in, runway 17. But eight, that's eight, not eight. where the wind is. So let's go ahead and see if we can request a different lane. And we cannot. Okay. So we can't request a different runway, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to deal with that. We're going to just have a tailwind when we land. But anyway, power back. Nose down. We're looking for 110. We'll do that. First notch of flaps. We're about three minutes out. And we should get a good about 500 feet per minute descend here. We want to be looking for around 1,300 feet once we cross the river. Okay, we're clear to land. There's no one clear out land, here. Runway 17, eight echo vector. We're still five miles out, but we're clear. We'll pull that nose up just a little bit. Line up on the runway here. I always like to set my heading bug for the, um, typically the, the reciprocal of my runway so that I can, mm, it's not covering my number but I know that it's behind me. Looks like we're pretty squared up for that approach right there. We're allowed to fly straight in. If not, they would tell you what, um, what pattern entry instructions to do over fly the field and make, you know, a left entry into the downwind, whatever. So they would tell you that, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. It's a lot more realistic, especially if you're trying to learn radio communications and pattern work and that sort of stuff. You can request touch and goes, full stops. Um, you can request to remain in the pattern, a whole bunch of other stuff. So that's really cool. Okay, we're about to cross the river. We're at 1,400 feet right now. We're a little bit high. So let's get that nose down. We'll pull the power back just a little bit more. This airplane does love to float more so in the game, in this game, than it does in X-Plane. So what you learn in X-Plane may not convert exactly um, to this game. If we look right here, you can see our VASI lights right there. Wide over white were too high, so let's get down a little bit lower. We'll do the next notch of flaps so we can get in a little bit slower there. One of the biggest surprises to me when transferring from X-Plane to Microsoft Flight Simulator is the ground effect. And this has it very good. Um, so the ground effect is that when you come down to land, you kind of make your own cushion of air that you float along. So you 
can't just float down and land on the ground. You kind of hover a little bit more. And you can get ground effect and explain with some different mods. There it is, right over white. We're all right. Um, you can do that, but it's here, free, standard in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it's a lot more realistic. So, yeah, this is definitely something that's um, going to help you with your landing. You get to learn the ground effect, use it, and you get to practice that some more. So your landings are going to get better in this game. We're still red over white, we're looking good, and we're at 80 knots. This airplane seems to not necessarily like to land super well. Red over red, we're dead. Let's get up a little bit. It doesn't like to land very well at speeds much lower than 70 knots. It kind of tends to drop out of the sky, not super realistic. We'll go our na last notch of flaps right there. Um, so it's slow flight is not quite as accurate, I feel. Um, like I pull up right here and it's not really doing much so we'll give it some more power and let's see here we go and go idle on the power and flare there it is we touch down and yeah it'll tell us to exit next taxiway probably we'll just take the first one in case anybody's behind us I haven't heard anything since though We'll go on the brakes, and we'll exit first taxiway. There it is. Exit when able. And there it is. We have landed in Aurora. Let me take you to Vans Aircraft. I'll show you around there. Um, yep. Over to ground, eight Echo Victor. Um, let's see. We're going to go down here. And I'll show you, it's up on the right, is Vans Aircraft. It's really cool, and I'm really excited to be able to um, test that out, fly some of their airplanes. I think it'd be super cool to build one. It's not actually modeled in here, but Vans Aircraft is like back here somewhere. Um, so yeah, that's it. That is Microsoft Flight Simulator. We'll go ahead and we'll just park somewhere. We'll just park right about here and we'll shut this down and we will finish this. So parking rick goes on, we'll turn that off, uh, avionics will go off, alternator will go off, and we'll pull the mixture. And there it is, batter goes off, megs go off, and we're done, we've made it. Thank you for watching, this has been a lot of fun. If you want to see more Microsoft Flight Simulator, let me know in the comment section. I really enjoy doing this, and I love to fly airplanes, so if you want to see this, definitely let me know, and we can make a video. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching, as always. This is Mark, and I will see you in the next one.